We are now finally to Chapter 9, and we'll start with the first law of thermodynamics. Here is a quote for you from Arnold Sommerfeld, who was an early turn-of-the-century physicist. I like this quote because it describes a good way to approach thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a funny subject. The first time you go through it, you don't understand it at all. The second time you go through it, you think you understand it, except for one or two small points. The third time you go through it, you know you don't understand it. But by that time you are so used to it, it doesn't bother you anymore. This slide is a reminder that you may need to go through thermodynamics several times before the different variables and their relationships start to make sense to you. This class does not go very deeply into thermodynamics, but the foundations that you're going to be provided with are true statements. In future classes, if you learn more about thermodynamics, you'll be able to relate those details to what you have initially learned in Chemistry 101. Thermodynamics is a subtopic of energetics, which includes thermodynamics and kinetics. For thermodynamics, we worry about will the reaction happen? So we'll be looking at energy and its transformations, specifically the energy content of the reactants and the products. We'll be looking at enthalpy, which is the heat content, and entropy, which is disorder. Kinetics is more concerned about how fast a reaction might happen and by what mechanism it occurs. We are not going to fool with Mother Nature. When I think of Mother Nature, this is the lady I think of and her two sons, Heat Miser and Cold Miser. It is impossible to get more energy out of a system than you put in. That would be fooling Mother Nature. So we can't fool her. We are just going to try and understand her. I'm glad that Jurassic World is a recent movie so that students can relate Mother Nature to Jurassic Park. Surely students went back and viewed the earlier films. It's what I do with all my science fiction series. So what happens in Jurassic Park when Mother Nature is in charge? Number one, the fences lose energy. If power is not provided, then things fall naturally to their ground state. So in thermodynamic terms, reactions in which energy is lost are those that are preferred. These are known as exothermic reactions. What is the next thing that happens? Well, the dinosaurs spread out over the park. In thermodynamic terms, that will be the next lecture. Reactions in which energy is spread out are preferred. These are known as reactions in which the entropy change is greater than zero. In order to think about enthalpy, we need to think about heat and work. Heat is the disorganized movement of molecules. Work is the organized movement of molecules. Work and heat can be converted into one another. I will place this link regarding the Stirling engine in Moodle. Please view this video to learn how heat and work are interconvertible. Basically, when there is a temperature difference, the Stirling engine causes a flywheel to rotate so we can see a difference in heat produces work. The first law of thermodynamics is that energy is neither created nor destroyed in any process, but the form of the energy can change. Heat is disorganized energy. It's something we feel, like temperature. Work is organized energy, something we see, like a flywheel spinning or a piston moving. The first law of thermodynamics says that the energy change of the universe is equal to the energy change of the system plus the energy change of the surroundings, and that sum is zero. The energy change of the system is equal to Q plus W. Those of you familiar with physics know that Q is typically the symbol for heat. W is typically the symbol for work. 
and these have algebraic signs associated with them. When Q is greater than zero, heat is absorbed by the system. That means heat goes in. When Q is a negative value, heat will be released by the system. When work is positive, that means work is done on the system. When work is negative, that means work is done by the system. If we look at the first law of thermodynamics and the sum of zero, this means that the energy change of the system is equal to the negative energy change of the surroundings. So when the system absorbs energy, the surroundings must release energy. And when the system releases energy, the surroundings must absorb energy. Now perhaps you're wondering what exactly are the system and the surroundings? The system is the chemical reaction or phase change under study. So I'm going to give you a scenario. If one has dry ice and places it in a Erlenmeyer flask with a balloon attached to the glass nozzle, what will happen is the deflated balloon will eventually start to blow up because solid carbon dioxide starts to sublime and make CO2 gas. And the carbon dioxide gas requires more volume than the solid does. So this is what we would call the system, a phase change under study. And our system energy would be increasing because we know that the enthalpy of sublimation is going to be a positive value as we go from solid to gas. I looked up the enthalpy change for this at standard state, and it's 25.2 kilojoules per mole. What are the surroundings then? The surroundings are everything else that's not the system. So that would be the room, a car on the street on Hillsboro, the Hunt Library. If I were able to do this demo in class, students would realize that the Erlenmeyer flask feels cold. In fact, it may get so cold that water vapor will condense out of the air and make liquid water. So what is going on in the surroundings? We're undergoing a phase transformation for water from gas to liquid. That enthalpy change is the opposite sign of the enthalpy of vaporization, so it is a negative value, and it happens to be negative 44 kilojoules per mole of water. According to the first law of thermodynamics, when the system absorbs energy, the surroundings must release energy. So we have two things going on. Solid carbon dioxide is subliming and going up in potential energy, and water vapor is condensing and going down in potential energy. The energy change of the universe is going to be equal to the energy change of the system plus the energy change of the surroundings, and that should be equal to zero. So the correct amount of water is going to condense to balance the amount of carbon dioxide that sublimes. In fact, that ratio is for every one mole of CO2 that sublimes, 0.57 moles of water need to condense. In future classes, you may wind up measuring that and finding that this is true. All of the lecture notes refer to sections in the ebook. As you can see, we're in section 9.1. Those students who are reading along in the ebook will discover that the energy change of the system is simply written as delta E. Here is your student question What is delta E system, delta E surroundings, and delta E universe? You notice there is not much selection for delta E universe. Your choice is zero. For work, we have 200 joules of work done on it. And for heat, 125 joules are released. In using our formula, delta E system equal Q plus W, it will be important to use the right algebraic sign plus or minus for these values. 
Students who are not certain can go back to the previous slide for help on the algebraic values.